I don't, I don't have the, the answer, either, but I think the, the situation, the baseline situation, is not always like you say. Sometimes, actually, with the line, they are socially and environmentally in a better position than what they are. Probably they are because they are having isolated diesel power plants, which are using fossil fuels, or they are using the biomass from the from their locations. So probably with uh, with these solutions, they are in a, in, a, in a better environmental situation. So it depends very much on what are the, the basic situation you are. Do you want to move again? I just wanted to say it's a very interesting question. And sometimes it's that to, to actually go for the local system if, if it allows that, like in Swedish conditions, maybe more biomass uh, extraction to be allowed. Uh, on, uh, yeah, it could be sustainable, otherwise it's really a disaster. So, so it's a very, I just, it's interesting someone raises the question, um, but, but I have no answer to that. We don't have answers. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else wants to add something to the presentation? Well, uh, obviously the matter is uh, a long process of knowledge. Uh, the, the implementation of, of all the, these strategies has been a long process of knowledge on dealing with the environmental matters and the social aspects. In, as, as time goes by, we're improving all these uh, procedures and strategies and uh, in the same way, I think that uh, construction lines uh, will be improving moreover over the time as we learn to deal with all these problems. I just have a question for the for the Inter American Development Bank. I'm thinking about this. Uh, Flamingo still, I don't have the solution either. <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, my question is more, uh, you, you, it looks like you are in a very complicated situation. You have a Ramsar site, you have a dangerous population. So, so my question goes, and we can abstract from the flamingos, but when, when, when in the bank, when do you have, what, what is a showstopper in the bank? Because I do some, I do teach environmental assessment, and I think I could use this as an example of not going ahead. So I, I understand you have the, the, the commitment to promote development in the country. So you, I, know, I know you have this trade-off, but what, what is, what, when would you stop this project? What would be the situation? Well, for this one, I'll have an answer. <laughs> Our environmental policy is pretty clear. We have a definition we call critical habitat, and the bank cannot finance a project that will lead to the significant degradation or conversion of a critical habitat. What I can tell you so far with this project is that we have enough data to determine that, yes, we are in a critical habitat, not only for the wetland, but all over the site. And the transmission line is right in the middle of it. Now we have to determine how the transmission line will destroy this feeding route, this reproduction site, and we're there. And unfortunately, ecology, population, dynamics, environment, there's no quantitative threshold. And I ask this, you know, my conclusion, how much we're willing to lose uh, adult flamingos, uh, vulnerable species, or chicks. So this is a long process, this is a long exercise, and uh, when we come up at this uh, decision point, we're not there yet, we need a little bit of more data, we, our mythologies, we gather, you know, three experts, three external experts, independent, and we seek their views, and then we come up to a decision that we have is based on science, based on good judgments, based on, you know, experience, experimented people, much more experimented than me, and then uh, the decision is taking that, okay, we cannot support this project. It has been done in other projects in the past, and, um, I can also add a, a comment to the question raised by Rocio. I think when we, we have to look up front also, and as a development bank, we are lucky that the projects come very early, uh, especially those from the public se se sector. We have to ask ourselves, what is the use of this energy? 
we, can we avoid this impact? And the question has to go back to, okay, the energy is, is for local population, is to serve mining development, further expansion. So we need to go back to the basic and do we need this energy? Thank you very much. I wanted to start from where you have ended. I came up, I mean, a bit late, so I didn't know whether this transmission line already exists or it doesn't, doesn't exist. exist. No. So uh, your, your results, of course, you have already uh, found out that flamingos are, will die if this power line is off. So are you planning in your future plans? I didn't see anything to do with either communicating your results to governments to tell them that this is what is happening and are you ready to go on with this project or you are ready to uh, pay for biodiversity offsets if you want to still go on with this project. Uh, in terms of paying for those, uh, uh, for the loss of biodiversity, I didn't see anything in your future plans. Thank you. Actually, I think uh, if I read you well, you know, your question has two sub-questions about communicating the results of the government. Actually, we're planning to go in July, but it's a public sector project, the, the, the geothermal project. And we know <laughs> so far that they are not very uh, happy about the results. They are scared that we will come with a no-go, that we will not have our support. But our goal at this stage is to try to work with them and involve them you know, in the mitigation measures. So in July, I'm going and with a colleague of mine and uh, we, we will try to involve uh, the electricity ENDE, which is the Electricity uh, National uh, Development Agency of Bolivia. But I also want to involve uh, CERNAP, which is the Secretaria de, de Recursos Natural in the national, national Parks. We want have both of these actors work together and we will help them, support them uh, financially with some guidance also, but we want the solution to come from them. So this is uh, where we are in terms of communicating to the government. Then the other questions about biodiversity offsets. We're not there yet, we need more data, but uh, I don't know if you're familiar you know, with the BBOP, you know, guidance, but there are thresholds also. We cannot offset everything. And uh, so far, with the results that we have and with the status of the species in concern, the James Flamingos will probably be listed as vulnerable next year. So can we offset this? And how? So uh, very, you know, uh, we cannot, you know, I cannot clone or create new flamingos. So it's, yeah, it's very challenging, very uh, nightmare sometimes. <laughs> Thank you. So uh, I think that to, to finish with this session, uh, I don't know if uh, Mary or, or Margaret they want to add something something else. Um, the last question we had was like uh, really like what's next with the, with this uh, challenge. I think that a little bit of what you asked for, it's uh, uh, r uh, answer a little bit that I think that uh, having more of this uh, information available for some. Uh, uh, countries where uh, the examples are less uh, successful, let's say, like uh, uh, in the case of California or the case with the CFD. So maybe maybe having uh, uh, more dissemination about these methodologies, the whole process that it takes, and how long does it take in order to to contribute? I, I would say for 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 this uh, communication as well. I don't know if you would like to add something else on on that. I represent CFIR. We work uh, with uh, a lot of programs uh, in, in the transmission lines, especially with uh, Aquila Grisetos uh, in the north of Mexico. But uh, well, we are uh, participating in this, but it's not my own experience. And I want to talk to uh, partner, Yerba. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, it's uh, very, very important, the communication about the experience. 
uh, we have considered that, and really one of the problems of CFE has been that we have not uh, saved in any, in, in any, for any uh, option, or we have not used any any communication channel for communicating about the results that we have got in different projects about these methodologies. And really, I don't know, but it, it was developed 10 years ago, and it's the first time that we were going to talking about it. Uh, obviously, it can be perfectly, but we need to communicate and obviously to receive uh, uh, opinions and in, in improving the, 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 per, the environmental performance and social and environmental per performance. Uh, I think it, it will be necessary uh, to have time for discussing specific topics of each uh, type of project. In this case, it would be very difficult to, to, talk, about, to talk about each, each point. But it will be very, very interesting that different sectors that we have a similar interest in transmission lines or hydropower or any, any aspect of the generation of transmission energy, we, we could discuss uh, directly and we could publish something about the, the conclusion of, of that as recommendation for working in the future. Uh, Just briefly, I think the questions you ask are probably ones that should be on the agenda for next year. <laughs> okay, well, thank you very much for coming to this uh, session. And uh, uh, just to remind you, we will have the uh, energy sector uh, uh, meeting in the, in the next room in, in Luz A. And uh, well, I would like to just give this, this final statement that, uh, that I wanted to make uh, uh, also of what Genevieve said. I mean, we have to think like, uh, what is the, the objective of the energy? Who, who are, are we trying to, to, to provide this, this energy and, and how? So I think that uh, in terms of those of us who are, who are working with the energy and environmental issues and, and social issues, it, that should be our, our, our main concern. Thank you very much. Enjoy.